Are you and your family prepared of disaster strikes? Well, here to make sure we're safe is the author of When Technology Fails, a manual for self-reliance and planetary survival. Please welcome Matthew Stein. Hey, Matt. Welcome. Hey, how are you doing? You. I'm doing terrific. We need to know how prepared do we really need to be? Well, preparedness is like car insurance. You hope you're never going to be in a wreck, mm -hmm. but... You want to have that insurance, and preparedness is the same way. We live in earthquake country. The people in Kobe, Japan, the people in Hurricane Katrina, if they'd had a kit like this, they would have been in much better shape. Mm. You said the people in Kobe, Japan, that earthquake, they didn't get help or water necessities for nine days. That's correct. The most earthquake-prepared country in the world, they thought, and it was nine days before the average Gee. person had food or water. So you should have enough for what? They, they say three days, but it sounds like we need to Three days is a real minimum. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'd like to store at least a couple weeks in your home, and if you have to carry it on your back, three days, absolute minimum. Okay, well, let's go through all these uh, neat things we need yeah. to have if disaster strikes. What's the first thing? Okay, the first thing is a hand crank radio. This is a radio that doesn't require batteries, and you crank it, and it has its own internal generator. Mm, that's good to have. And there are smaller versions, right? There are small versions. I, I have a little version if I have to carry something in my pack, and that's battery operated, and there are some small hand crank versions right. too. Okay, let's talk about water. That's, uh, so that's your important. lifeline. That's, okay. that's going to Water is critical. Most of us, you might not believe it, but most of us can live for a month without food. But in hot weather, one single day without water, and we're in major, oh, yeah. major trouble. Okay. Right. So how much water do we need? Okay. Average person needs about a gallon a day in hot weather. So if you have three gallons for three days, that's 24 pounds. Say so you had a family of four, that's 100 pounds of water. Mm. Couldn't carry that on your back. No way. So what I suggest you have is water filters and water treatment. So this right here, this can actually treat 2,000 water bottles full of water to purify it so that you don't get disease from drinking water. Now, in an earthquake in San Francisco, if the water supply busts, which a large earthquake will do, we'll be drinking out of the water in the duck ponds. And I personally wouldn't want to drink that unless I'd run it through my filter and treated it with chemicals both. Okay, okay do both. 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 Double whammy right. just to be safe. Now, this item right here, this is probably the item I use most, and I use it all the time. And this is a headlamp. It's LEDs, so the batteries last a long time. It's durable. And when you're working on something, the light goes right where you point your right, head. Right. You can carry things, leaves your hands free. That's Very important. so important. Yep. And then this looks like a first, first aid kit. First aid. i got to have that. First aid kits. This is a really big first aid kit. This is very comprehensive. I could even stitch somebody up if I had to. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll never have to do that. <laughs> right. If I'm carrying things on my back, I use a smaller first aid kit, like a real compact kit. And I supplement it with an ace bandage in case someone twists their ankle mm -hmm. and some cloth tape, some antibiotic ointment, and I like tea tree oil. Oh, Why? Yeah. Why tea tree oil? Tea tree oil is a natural oil that penetrates the skin. So you might have an infected, you know how you have an infected knuckle and it's really yes. ugly? You put the tea tree oil on it and it'll penetrate right through the skin to the infection. And I find over-the-counter things just don't do that. Okay. And then uh, this looks like toilet paper. This is toilet it's paper. Important. That's right. If you go number two. Or yeah. number one if you're a girl. Well, that's right. So and you might need plastic these. bag around it. A soggy roll of toilet paper is not much fun mm -hmm. and not much good for anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Compass. Now, the compass, I always have a string on the compass ever since I spent a night in swirling weather and in a snowstorm trying to find my way Oof. and I found pulling that compass out of my pocket very difficult with gloves and mittens on so I always have a, a string. Around your neck, Smoke right. in there. People say, why do I need a compass? Well, if you're in the dark, mm -hmm. earthquake happens, everything's going to go dark around you. Right. The compass has a lighted dial. It lights at night. Mm. You can see where you're going. Gotcha. Makes sense. This looks like something like a This is knife? a multi-tool knife. Oh. This is a Leatherman, and it has screwdriver. It has pliers. It oh, has yeah. knife blades, a can opener. Very okay. important to have Everything a can there. opener. Very nice tool. I, I suggest either a Leatherman or a Swiss Army knife. Okay. Gotcha. Next. Okay. These are fire-styding things. So this one is a... Utility lighter. 
This is a magnesium lighter. What do you do with that? And with this, you can use your knife and you can shave shavings of magnesium. And then there's a sparker on the side, a little flint. And you, you strike it. Yeah. You can start about. You can start hundreds of fires with this. And, and then these are waterproof matches. If they get wet, they still light. Waterproof oh, matches. Thank goodness That's for that. right. Here we have. Oh, go ahead. Now this is a sewing kit, oh. yeah. and I've been in the back country where I've fallen on skis in the winter and torn my back strap, mm. the strap on my backpack. Yeah. And without a heavy-duty sewing kit, I would have been in major, major trouble. And this is a sleeping bag, believe it or not. This is this is a disaster type emergency bag. Right. They call them space blankets or space sleeping bags. Mm -hmm. They're not really warm, but they're a whole lot better than nothing. They're reflective, and they keep the rain off of you and the wind off of you, and they reflect your heat back on you. Keep this in the car, too, if your yeah. car breaks down. And this is only like $2.95. Yep. That's and worth and it. it's compact. Right. Yeah, less than 3 bucks. Now, and a whistle. That's a whistle. And people say, well, why would I need a whistle? And you need a whistle because when your mouth is dry and you've been out in the woods, mm. you, can't, you're, you can't yell. You right, can't right, scream. Right, right. And with a whistle, you can always blow and you can alert somebody that they're there. I mean, yes, imagine... I found you. I found you. You're okay. <laughs> imagine, though, you know, somebody's <laughs> looking for you and... If you don't have a whistle, you might not be able to tell them you're there. Right. We'll survive anything with your book when technology fails. Matthew yeah, Stein, thank you so much for thank saving you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Really and and very Thanks. important thank information. You. Thanks so much. And all kinds of tips, extra tips and information can be found on our website, by the way. Oh, yeah. We have additional tips on our website. That's yeah. right. Okay. Sizzling kebabs your family will love. Next, Bruce Adels shares his secret recipe. And keep your family's pets healthy. Tune in tomorrow to find out what every pet lover needs to know. In today's Kitchen Think, the five-second rule. 
How long can food really stay on the floor and still be safely eaten? Well, scientists put this unwritten rule to the test. Let us know what you think on our website, viewfromthebay.com. I heard it's 30 seconds for wet food. Right. We broke the five second rule. So if it's like bologna or whatever, you can leave it on the floor for 30 seconds, pick it up and eat it. Or a minute for dry food, like M&M's and things no, like that. No, it's not even a second for me. I'm sorry. Food falls on the floor. It's staying there. Well, Rover can eat it. But you're Spencer's hungry right. and all that work after preparing it? I'm sorry. Anything okay. touches the floor is not touching my mouth. I'd give it five seconds. All right. Well, <laughs> Oh boy, while burgers and steaks are always good standbys at a barbecue, why not mix things up a bit by adding some new flavors to the grill without letting your food fall to the ground? <laughs> Our contributing chef Bruce Adele has visited the Marin Farmer's Market and shares his recipe for sizzling sausage and vegetable kebabs. <laughs>